in the area for the afternoon. Well, hello, this is Adam, and welcome to Rare Classic Cars here on this muggy night in the Midwest. I wanted to show you my 1971 Mercury Marquis Brome four-door sedan. People often ask me, what's a great car to get started if you want to begin in the collector car market? And I almost always reply, find a late 60s or even mid-60s to 1974 Mercury product and you're going to be extremely happy. People don't tend to know about them. They're not as collectible as the Fords or the Lincolns or the GM cars or the Chryslers. And they're just superb products. I mean, they really are. They drive so wonderfully, smooth, silent, and get the most top of the line Mercury that you can. This is the Marquis Brome, which would have been the top of the line for 1971. I mean, this car, it's big. It's not as big as the Lincoln, three inches shorter wheelbase. And you can see it's a pillared sedan as opposed to the hard top. This body style was new in 1969 and the chassis was revised as well as the sheet metal. 1971 is a refinement of the 1969, 1970s with a new instrument panel. This instrument panel would just last for 1971 and 1972 before Ford would commonize it with the Ford design and then later in the late 70s even Lincoln would use the same Ford instrument cluster. But look here at just the superb interior materials. I mean wonderful brocade fabric and then a nylon and then a vinyl here. Get the wonderful key buzzer. This does have the rim blow horn. You pinch the horn, as you can see there. The door panel is all soft touch material, including the armrest, aside from, you know, obviously where the brocade cloth is and this faux wood grain and the kick panel, but it's just an expensive door panel. Actually, I would say even more expensive than the Lincoln, which had hard plastic all throughout the middle of the armrest, which you had to take out if you wanted to take the door panel off. And these car doors on these Fords just shut great. A lot better than the GMs of the era. This is one of these great vehicles that you can take your family in. The seats are all the way back. And look at how much leg room you have here. Get nice reading lights in the sail panel. This car doesn't have the optional deluxe seat belts, which would have been color keyed. Yes, you had to pay for that. These are just the standard belts that are black. Doesn't look that great, but oh well. Somebody's got a set of green seat belts for this car, let me know. This was the first year and the only year of this front end in this specific treatment. 1972, they would change to an egg crate grill up front. And I think the 71 grill is just a bit more tasteful. Plus the 71 is the last year of the high compression big block engines under hood. This is a 429 premium fuel two barrel, yes I said that right, or two Venturi V8. Ford was pretty big on the two Venturi carburetors and there's a good reason why. You know some may say a two barrel on a 429, you know what, it works wonderfully well. And there it is. You can see 429 2V. This car has 19,000 miles on it. Air conditioning works, still charged on R12, and it is damn cold. Cold, cold, cold. Still has the original radiator hose there that actually is fine. And I put a new master cylinder on it. Of course, a new battery. But really, that's about it. These engines, this car still has its stock exhaust. And these engines are so quiet from the factory, they sound like a jet engine, like just a turbine. You don't even hear hardly any exhaust note in the cabin. So smooth.
It's so quiet. And I love the rear tail light, 71 only. This is a unique treatment with the full width tail light. And this not only illuminates with the parking lights, but also illuminates with the stop lights, which is pretty sweet. And of course, you have the reverse lights there. I don't know how many bulbs it is, but it's more than a few. This car I bought actually out of Saskatchewan on the prairies. There was not even a mailing address for the car. The guy had to give me Meridian coordinates. And I had it shipped from Saskatchewan to Toronto where I picked it up, trailered it back across the border, imported it. So this is not St. Paul, Minnesota. This is, I believe, St. Paul, Alberta. That's where the car originally came from. When I got it, the paint was a little hazy and I had it professionally polished. And you can tell it just looks great. Final top is perfect. Wonderful condition. But again, if you want just a cheap collectible, I paid the equivalent of about $6,000 for this car and it has 19,000 miles. Now this was, oh, four years ago or so. So the prices have gone up a bit, but they're still not expensive on these vehicles. And this is just such a great car. You can take it on road trips. You can drive it anywhere you want. And it's, you do it in pure luxury and silence. The air conditioning is ridiculously great. Inside at about 70 miles an hour, the road noise is 67 decibels, which even by modern standards is quiet. And importantly, the uh, sound reading doesn't change whether or not you go over asphalt or concrete. So let's get in it. I'll take it for a little spin here around the block. I love the dark green, even dark green headliner. I sure miss the colored headliners. And humorously, this car has the smallest inside rear view mirror. I'm not quite sure why. And in 71 only, they had this pretty small gear shift that actually has pretty smooth action still. It's a little notchy, but the 72s are far notchier. Ford had this problem on the late 60s cars where they would shift out of park and progressively these shift mechanisms got clunkier and clunkier. I think 72s were the worst. They're super notchy. Um, by 75 or so, it was a bit better. They were trying to emphasize you knowing what gear the car was in, aside from just looking and making sure that it was in park. So let's start it up and fires right up. The C6 shifts into gear wonderfully. This is certainly the definition of a nautical ride in this car. But it rides great, it handles. Uh, this one doesn't handle horribly. This one car actually has the cross country ride and handling package. So it's a little bit better than most. That was a relatively rare option on these. And it does firm up the suspension pretty noticeably. And here we go out on the main road, windows up, air conditioning on. This air conditioning in this car is great. The late 60s Ford's air conditioning was eh, okay. It wasn't bad. It was cold. It wasn't as good as GM's. But they were starting to add more capacity to the systems by this point, and eventually they actually even switch over to GM air conditioning systems. Lincoln switched over in 1972 to the GM Harrison setup. But I have to say the air conditioning in this car is... Icy, icy cold. Still has the two-piston York compressor.
And as you can see, there's no noise at all. I'm going 50 miles an hour now. And it's just wonderfully smooth cruising. A slight bit of rear end noise sometimes in these Fords around this speed when you take your foot off the gas. Pretty typical. Ever so slight. But that's really about it. Just a wonderful driving car. If the thing wouldn't rust away in the wintertime, I would daily these cars for the rest of my life. You just get in it and you're relaxed. You don't drive like a jerk. You just take your time. Plenty of power from the 429 premium fuel V8. It was rated at 320 gross horsepower. Optional four barrel was 360 horsepower. And yes, the two barrel, it doesn't wheeze a little bit at higher RPM, sure, but I mean, it works great. GM had 455s with two barrel carburetors on them. Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, all had that. So this wasn't anything unusual. It, wow, this air conditioning is cold. I gotta turn it down. So in any event, if you're looking for just a wonderful classic to enjoy, get a Mercury. Enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching.